Welcome back to ESBR Boxing's YouTube channel. Delighted, as always, to be joined by my esteemed colleague, Elliot Grigg. Elliot, we're here in preview mode once again. This fight is happening in London. We're at the Copper Box Arena. Again, was meant to have happened at the back end of 2023. We're getting it on the 10th of February, 2024. We are, of course, talking about the middleweight dust-up, domestic middleweight dust-up, may I add, between Hamza Shiraz and Liam Williams. This is, of course, a Frank Warren show. 12 rounds at 160 pounds. We've got Hamza Shiraz in one corner, 18 and 0, 14 KOs. Bit of a prospect, friend, looking looking like he could go on to great things. Only 24 years old. And, of course, you've got Liam Williams. Doesn't really need any introduction. Been there, done that. Four defeats, but they've come to Liam Smith twice, Demetrius Andrade for a world title, and, of course, Chris Eubank Jr. So, up in good company. But as we like to do now, mate, I'm going to go straight in. I said that Hamza Shiraz... Um, is is potentially one of Britain's hottest prospects. So in in that in that elk and kind of with that in mind, my first question to you, mate, is: Is Hamza Shiraz Britain's next world champion? Oh, that is a savage. Well, first of all, thank you very much for that eloquent breakdown introduction. That is a savage way to start uh, any any video. I think, um, like you said, he's uh, he's definitely up there. Um, as one of you know, Britain's Britain's most promising prospects. Whether it becomes Britain's next world champion, I think there's some other guys in there as well that you could say, depending on how um, how matchups kind of go, could could be in with a shout. I mean, you know, I've, I've mentioned even people like Nick Ball um, as a potential guy that could be in for. A, you know, depending on we were talking about, you know, I suppose like proper, you know, full fully fledged uh, editions of the world title, not the sort of silvers and and everything else. So I look at someone like him, maybe even someone like Jack Catterall. Uh, depending on if he can get a, get a certain a certain matchups, and I'm going to mention one other name because we talked about this in in other videos. People could laugh me out of ESPR for saying this, but your man Lewis the Croc Crocker as well. Depending on how that goes as well, mate, could he be in with a shout as well? So different names. I think it depends on how, like I say, how they're matched, how they're promoted, um, and how they're pushed. But I think he's definitely he's in with a shout for me. Might be. I think to be honest with you, I think he might be behind someone like Nick Ball um, for an opportunity. But I think. Uh, He's definitely, I think maybe in the next sort of four fights, I think he'll obviously be up there for sort of world title for me. I love, mate, that the fact that you're well and truly on the Crocker hype train. <laughs> now, and we're talking about a middleweight fight that has nothing to do with Lewis Crocker, and you've mentioned him. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely love that from you. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, in all seriousness, I think, I think yeah, it kind of depends on what way you, you look at that question. Is he, is he Britain's next world champion, Hamza Shiraz? That's probably unlikely. Um depending on how obviously Nick Ball does against um uh Ray Vargas in his in his WBC title challenge at Featherweight. There's a few other ones as you as you mentioned as well, a few other names. So when it comes to next world champion, I think that would be difficult. But if I reword it and kind of rephrase it maybe in the chance is he is he a potential world champion from Britain in the in the near future? Yes, absolutely. I think he's shown recently in his performance as Hamza Shiraz that not only is he is he an incredible boxer, but you know he he's a spiteful spiteful puncher with dynamite in his fists as well. You look at his record; he's fourteen um he's fourteen knockouts in his eighteen wins. Twelve of those are actually in a row. His last twelve have all been via stoppage. And then you look at some of those names, like the Bradley Skeet one was controversial, right? But then since that, he's kind of thrown all that controversy aside because he knocked out, obviously, River Wilson Bent really quickly. Then you look at that one that he fought on the, the Usyk Dubois undercard, um, the Mitrofanov, who was previously undefeated, a lot of hype about him um, from, from, from Eastern Europe. And yeah, he, he annihilated him in, what, five rounds, um, Hamza Giras. So he's a heavy-handed individual. And I think when you look at the world level, the kind of broad spectrum of middleweight, He's definitely, uh, definitely a player, um, particularly if he comes through this this test against Liam Williams. I mentioned Liam Williams there, mate. Um, kind of talk about him now. And some people might not find this a very fair question, but I'm going to ask it because I think it needs to be asked. Come Sunday morning, should Liam Williams lose this fight? Where do you see him going? Is it potentially the end? That would be his fifth defeat at a certain level. Do you think potentially if this is a loss for, for the Welshman that it could maybe be the end for him? Oh, well, that's a brutal question. That's a brutal question. He's only, only when he's only about 31 years old, I think, is he? He's not, a, he's not an old fighter. So I'm reluctant to initially say that it is the end for him. I know that other people in the outlet, um, you know, McKendry, the rule of McKendry would have him 
obviously you know retiring off into the off into the Welsh valleys. But I think um, you look at some of the losses he's had. Obviously, Dimitri Andrade boxed really well that night. Started off like a strained and then obviously let Williams in a little bit. But then you look at the levels that he had. Eubank Junior as well, um, another one. So I feel like he's he's been competing up at that sort of higher level, like you say. For me, I think it would kind of depend on how. Shiraz beats him if he were to beat him. If he was just like go and then blast him out, I would think, okay, this this could be the end for Liam Williams in some ways. Because like we said with with Shiraz, had that performance against Skeet, which was a bit, which was was lukewarm, frankly, to say the, to say the least. Um, but I still feel that I'm gonna throw a name in you in a minute, which gonna get you excited. But I feel like in the middleweight division, he's still he still have enough for for a lot of the names that are maybe below that top level, which would be Eubank, um, Shiraz. Possibly you could even have Liam Smith if he's fighting as well. But let me tell you about this. I think, what would you think if uh, Liam Williams was to fight Tyler Denny after this? Maybe with someone of that sort of name. He could drop down, maybe level still to fight. I feel like Liam Williams is one of those guys that enjoys fighting, enjoys boxing. He's one of those guys, I think, that sees it as a chore. I think he sees it as kind of a way of life. And something. he just seems to strike me as a sort of pro in that way that loves the sport. So I'd be very, very surprised if he does retire. I wouldn't necessarily like to see him retire unless, as I said, Shiraz comes in and maybe blasts him out in like two rounds and he looks terrible. Yeah, man. I think that, <laughs> yeah, I think I, I agree with what you've said there. I don't think we'll see. I don't think this is the end of Liam Williams if he is to lose. Of course, we're not writing him off. He could well win this fight. And, you know, a lot of people will maybe back him with the experience that he's had and, and the level he's fought at. But don't even bring Tyler Denny into it. He's the European champion, mate. He's looking at world honors. He's looking up there now. So he is. Don't be, you know, no domestic fights anymore. He's looking at world honors. He's going to defend the European belt once, and then he's and then he's going to he's going to beat. He's going to bring Galandi Golovkin out of retirement and beat him. Uh, but no, no, yeah, I, I think, I think, uh, to answer your question, mate, um, and I do agree with what you said, I don't think it's the end for Liam Williams. I think that even if he is to lose, he still can operate at a reasonably high level. You know, you'd have him well above British level, Liam Williams, I think. Probably have him around that European fringe world level. But yeah, I think it's it's, it's down to the manner of the Eight or victory uh, against Hamza Shiraz here. It kind of leads us on nicely, mate. Um, we always like to finish these videos with with a little prediction, and I'm not gonna. I'm I'm gonna throw it right to you straight away. Um, 10th of February, Saturday night, Copper Box Arena, London. Who walks away from the ring in the main event with their hand raised and how? You know what, Paul? I um I could regret this. <clears throat> I don't think I regret it as much as I do. Um predicting Thompson to beat off a tyre. But I think um, I actually fancy Liam Williams here. I don't know why. I just feel like... You remember when Liam Williams fought, like, is it Fox? And Lanay's Fox as well. And he was an like, underdog in that fight um, and came through and, like, battered him. And I almost feel like he's going to have... I almost feel like that motivation, the level he's been at. The thing that worries me is the height difference. Here in is a big middleweight in comparison to Liam Williams. But Liam Williams is tough. But I feel like if Shiraz has... A slight dip and I look at you know the guys he's fought before or some of the performances he's put in he's kind of coasted a bit obviously reliant on that power I feel that Liam Williams could actually get to him so I'm actually going to predict Liam Williams um the man the man from Wales and I'm going to go with I think he might I actually think he might stop Shiraz it's a bold it's a bold claim but I think I just got something about me thinks he might get to him and stop him um so yeah I'm going to go with Liam Williams by a late KO by late I mean sort of somewhere eight plus but i think somewhere around nine to twelve i think liam williams could get to him um but equally you know when we are coming back here and you know we reconvene next monday and liam williams has been laid out on his back and you've predicted challenges share as ko i'm not going to criticize you if, you if you go that way but i i've got a feeling that liam williams might get to him just on on experience and 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 guile frankly and motivation interesting mate we're not in agreement for this one i think um after last week's videos we were both in agreement with our method of victories i'm going shiraz and I'm going to go mid stop, mid mid round stoppage, somewhere between five and eight, really. And I'm not dismissing the talent that Liam Williams has. I think he's a credible fighter and a really good fighter. But I think Hamza Shiraz could be special. And what's making me think, lean towards the stoppage, is you look at Liam Williams against Andrade. He was dropped early, but then obviously Andrade coasted. Eubank dropped him four times, three times early on, and then just coasted. Whereas I don't think Hamza Shiraz, if he hurts Liam Williams. I don't think he's going to coast. I think we've seen he's got that killer instinct and he'll want to get you out of there. So I could maybe see Shiraz um, wobbling Williams, maybe dropping him in the mid-rounds and then I think he'll pounce on him if he does that and potentially potentially get the stoppage. But yeah, 
fair enough, mate, for you going for the, the Liam Williams win. I'm saying a few people might agree with you. It is it is a really intriguing fight and one that could definitely go either way. You can make a case for both fighters. But yeah, let us know in the comments, guys, what you think. Are you on Elliot's side? Do you think Liam Williams wins or are you firmly on the Hamza Shiraz hype train? Um, will he progress to 19-0 and 0, uh, at just 24 years old? But yeah. Thanks very much, Elliot. Enjoyed that one, mate, as always. Guys, let us know your thoughts on this fight and be sure to check out the rest of the channel for plenty of content coming your way. Thanks very much, Elliot, and I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you very much, Paul, and as always, guys, thank you very much for watching.